Welcome to New York City. Um, what an exciting occasion to have this conversation. We have an incredible event coming up titled Hokies. Um, I want to begin our conversation by asking you about this incredible performance. Obviously, it would be fair to say that there is something we don't see very often. It's a fusion of traditional Armenian performance, acrobatics, as it described, almost circus or soleil type of acrobatics, visuals, and uh, performed in an absolutely legendary landmark, New York City Center. Um, what else there is to say? I'm excited to hear from you. What is this all about? <laughs> Tell us. It's, um, it's about uh, bringing on stage two people um, tomorrow's Armenia. Uh, why? First of all, because we're talking about children. And what, are, what better proof of future than children? So that's, of course, the first thing. This is our future. But also in terms of storytelling. This is absolutely not what you would expect uh, as a diaspora or, um, Armenian to go and see, let's go and see uh, a show coming from Armenia. We are more used to see traditional dancing, which is great, wonderful, in traditional costumes. And we love that we, because we miss that. But we need now to go further. And that's what it is about. It's about showing how modern, how creative we are and the emotions we can share with people by telling a story, a real story. Let's talk about the title, Hokis, because the moment I saw it, I said, unless I forgot Armenian, which I haven't, this has got to be a love story. Um, is it a love story? And if it is, what is it trying to say? It is a love story, but anybody could uh, understand it in their own way. Meaning that if you want to see this show and believe it's just a love story between a man and a woman, it's going to be perfect. But if you want to look at this show and see that it is a love story between the diaspora and the Armenians from Armenia, it will work too. Uh, and this is the message, like the bottom line message is that you should never stop dreaming, you should never stop believing, and you should never stop loving. Love is, is, is universally needed among, amongst people, and it's particularly useful for a small nation like us to be connected without any question. Why, why push boundaries? Why mix mediums? And the reason I'm asking you, because that's going to bring me to my lead up questions, because we are talking about kids or youth that are studying different disciplines, correct? Um, and there is a technology aspects involved in it. When did idea strike you to do a fusion, a multimedia performance, so to speak? Because it is about, um, it is not about multimedia. It is not about dancing or circus. It's about art. I had a chance to travel a lot around the world and really I have never seen a country like Armenia where children are filled with creativity. Mm. And this creativity, and yes, but this it's part of creativity. Mm -hmm. Technology in the Tumo Center is about creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, dancing at Hayartat Stun, mm -hmm. it's about creativity. Circus, which is circus, but it's about creativity. Mm -hmm. It's about the poetry they give you. This is what it is about. It is about those children that are performers at a, such a high level. And this is the emotions those kids are passing by the media they're passing it by, whether it is dance, circus, singing, um, dancing, uh, the multimedia, like really multimedia or technological, this is just a mean. It, it, the, it's a language. Yes, the, the, the important thing is how creative they are. I want to pick up on something you said about new, right? About um, 
the new generation, the new voice, the new technology, the new way of expressing. Because when I was reading about uh, this performance and about your idea, you kind of went out of your way to say that it is not about the genocide. It is about today, right? Is it about our survival? It is about us rising after this horrific event. So talk a little bit about that. So the thing is that even the first show I did, uh, and the first show I did was for the centennial, but the reflection was, you know what? I am fed up about being an Armenian reduced to the genocide. Of course, the genocide is very important. Of course, it changed our life. Of course, there's no way we're going to get over it. There's, I mean, it, we, this is part of us. But this is not only part of us. There's been so many other things. And that's why this story starts with, because it's a love story, but it's also a love story that takes time starting at the three kingdoms of Armenia that can be reunited by one king, and it ends today. So this is this, this time us. lapse. It's the story of us. Yes, yeah. it's pretty big. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly when you go and see Titanic, you know. Yes, you go and see a love story, but it's also a story of Titanic. Mm -hmm. This is the story of Armenia, and it's a very love story. Mm -hmm. So it, this is what it is about. I understand you had a very short notice on this. Uh, originally, you even thought that the AGBU that is uh, working with you to bring this performance here in New York, originally you thought they won your previous performance here, but they said, we want a premiere, right? Uh, and you had four months. This, I think, would be very interesting for our audience. Not only you had such a short time that you, yeah, that you could have done something that you have already done, you decided to blow this thing off the field, as they say in America. So tell us a little about how did you manage to put it together? So uh, obviously four months to create something like that is like totally crazy. Uh, but on the other hand, I mean, how can I say no? How can anybody say no? Why did I thought it was possible? Because I know those kids, mm. those children when I saw them. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. They are so dedicated to their art so trustful with their teachers, with the, the choreographer. They, they, it's like they are one big family. I mean, they've been rehearsing for the past three months now, every single day, five hours a day. And we're talking about children that are going to school, regular school, yeah. that have homework to do. And, but they are so happy. So it's like, Oh my God! He's like, you, you tell me we're going to we're going to do a new musical. Okay, I'll do it. It doesn't. It's not a question of like, let's go to New York. Let's go. No, the the New York part and the Broadway part is more the it's pressure part. Yeah. yeah, it's a bonus, <laughs> but it's the it's the real pressure part because the rest we only have four months. Yeah. So what? So Friday, October twenty eighth, eight p.m. at New York City Center. I get nervous reading this. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> nervous. I went to the uh, New York City Center today for the first time. It's a big hall. When you get in, there's something happening. Yeah. You just go like, oh my God, this is it. I mean, this is Broadway. This yeah. is the dream of any director. It's a, it's and, a real landmark. It's a real and, New York City landmark. And, and you just go like, so I'm going to bring those kids that I fell in love with mm -hmm. in New York on Broadway to do a show. And... Uh, the thing is that I can't answer your question because it's too, there's too, yeah. emo too much emotions, too many emotions. And it's before the show. Yes, on top of that. On top of that. Uh, you know, I could talk about this all night, but our time is limited, so I want to move and talk about a few other things. Uh, when I was doing research about you, particularly, I saw a very moving video, a short video. Uh, you took a bike ride from Marseille to Yerevan, if I'm correct. Yes. Um, I understood that it was sort of a personal pilgrimage for 100th anniversary of Armenian genocide. And there was a moment when you arrived to Yerevan, it's a short clip, and there was a plaque with your father's name in Yerevan. It was very touching how you got out of the bike and sort of recognized that. Um, tell, us, tell us a little bit about your father. What, what did it mean to you? Um, I've always had a very good... Um, relation with my father. He was a tough guy. He was never easy on us. 
he, the way he brought us, my sister and I, made us who we are now, meaning that he always protected us. Uh, nowadays, People magazine, everything. You see everybody all the time. You see the parents, you see the, the children, you see the, ki the little babies, you see, and you watch them growing and everything. Obviously, at that time already, my, people were asking, like, let's do some picture with your family. And my father always said no. We never appeared on any magazine. We never were interviewed. So he really protected us. And on the other hand, he was very tough also with us. Uh, when I decided to get into this business, first thing he said was like, okay, you want to do this business? First thing he said for, was to try to convince me to do something else. As a matter of fact, he wanted to be a dentist. Why? I don't know. But that was his plan for me. Then he said, okay, you don't want to be a dentist. You want to be uh, in the movie business? Fine. You know that I won't help you. So I said, sure. And I hope you're not going to help me because I never want to go to a position just because I'm your son. So one thing that helped was that I had already taken back my uh, Armenian name. Mm -hmm. So even when the first meeting, people wouldn't know I am Harney Vano's son. They would know pretty quickly after, but that's it. First impression is already made. So, uh, and I grew up the latter. You know, I, be, I became, a, I started as a, an apprentice and then became a second assistant director, then a first assistant director, and uh, then a director. Yeah, Apple never falls for, never falls. You don't, know, you know what, I can't, People, a lot of people ask me that question uh, because not only my father was a famous director, but my mother is a film editor mm -hmm. and she won an Oscar at Hollywood. Mm -hmm. When you have those two parents, you, yeah, people were like, oh, It's really hey. hard to get away from that. Yeah, but my sister is a veterinarian. Interesting. <laughs> so maybe dentist wasn't a bad idea at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, dentist part, maybe. That's right. Um, one more question about your father. You know, of course, uh, he made many films. He was incredibly successful. Uh, and he's a pride of Armenian nation, without any question. But perhaps for our audience, most famous film is Mayrik. Uh, I would, I would safely assume that. Do you have any anecdote from the from that film? A lot. Give us a short one. <laughs> short and sweet. Short and sweet. We are shooting the uh, arrival in Marseille uh, of the boat uh, with all the immigrants uh, on board. We need three days to shoot those scenes and we figure out that we need on the first day 350 extra and on the two other days only 150 extra for the close-ups. Because it's a, a film that costs a lot of money because it's a nine-hour movie and everything, um, the producer says I can't afford those kind of extra. So my father said okay uh, give me a, a couple of weeks. We went down uh, with him uh, in Marseille where he was raised, he gathered the, all the president of all the Armenian association in one room and he said, you've been bugging me for years. When are you going to do a movie about us? I am doing it right now. But I need you. I need 350 on the first day, 150 on the second day, 150 on the third day. I can't afford it. Can you bring me those extra? And all the president of the association said, okay. Well, we, we will find those extra for you. 600 Armenians showed up. Wow, it's incredible. For the three days in a row. The costume people started to say, we can't take them because we don't have enough costume for them. And I said, you can't refuse them. It's impossible. And then those Armenians came and said, we don't need any costume. They brought the costume from their parents or grandparents who came to Marseille with their original Armenian costume that they had during the genocide, we dress those 600 people. We make them, we do the makeup and everything. And by midday, everybody's ready. So I'm saying, we're all in there, in a hole in a hangar, uh, hangar, I'm on the hangar, it's a um, uh, warehouse. They're all sitting down in a warehouse, waiting to start to shoot. And I'm going, get, going to get my father, and I'm bringing him. I said, they're all ready. And they said, we have 600, not 350. He came in this warehouse. Everybody stand up, stood up, and they started to sing an Armenian song. And we started to cry. That's one of the best memories I have. Thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, sharing uh, that wonderful story. Um, let's talk a little about you. Uh, you are an incredible, successful uh, director, writer, producer in your own right. Um, 
aside from this event, what, you, what, what should we expect from you? What do you work on now? Well, um, these two p pieces went back to back, so it, it took me a, long, a lot of my mind. Um, what should you expect from me is um, going to be, I do believe, very interesting in a few months to come and probably years because we are in the process of um, changing those children youth center into an academy because I do believe that they deserve it and I do believe that we need to give them justice by putting them at the level they are. We are synonym of excellence and this is what it is. Uh, higher Tatstun is synonym of excellence in performing arts. Tumo is synonym of excellence in technology art. Mm -hmm. Now let's show it to the entire world and let the entire world benefit of it. Uh, you know, listening to you, I, I, it begs a question and I, I have to ask you because I understand that you, you really didn't grow up in diaspora. Right? You grew up in a French society. Um, you uh, a French artist, a French director, um, but you're also a man who drove a, a motorcycle from Marseille to Yerevan. You're also a man who dedicated a huge chunk of his life um, working with Armenian kids, Armenian schools, showing Armenian talent to the world on the biggest world stage. Where did the shift happen? How did this happen? It's a very good question. The reason why I was uh, brought a part of all those Armenian association was my father. He was always f answering uh, any demand he would have. He would go from any association. But on the other hand, he wasn't active in those associations because he was fed up by the fact that Armenian diaspora always fight against each other instead of fighting for their country. Um, so I was brought up like that. And um, then I moved to Marseille, where uh, kind of uh, back to not my roots, but my origins. And then one day I heard that I, was, I went to a couple of uh, AGBU, a meeting at the AGBU Marseille, and then I heard that AGBU Marseille uh, was uh, looking for a new president. And from what I've seen, I thought, I think I can do something over there. I think uh, I'm ready to do something over there. So I think you, this is something that we all have inside our, ourselves. Sometimes it never blows up. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it is, and then it goes away. In my case, it was the opposite. Thank you for this wonderful conversation. It was, uh, I'm sure, as exciting and interesting for our audience as it was for me. It's a pleasure to meet you, first of all, and we are looking forward to October 28th. We will all going to be there uh, again for all of you watching at home, Friday, October 28th, uh, New York City Center, uh, Hokies. Please come see, because I think it's something that's going to stay with you for a very long time. Thank uh, you. Yes, I think really get rid of all what you think you know you're going to see. All right. There you have it. <laughs> we'll see you there. <laughs> Thank you.